Praise Yahweh. Most holy and righteous Heavenly Father Yahweh, this is Quan Shmuel Hawkins along with these, your sons, Father, begging permission to come before you as seed of the last day's witness, the great Quan Yisrael Abel Hawkins, the Ramosa Hab, and honorable high priest and king, Yeshua Messiah. Father, we do thank you for this opportunity to have a workshop, to be able to learn more about your way, to be able to have time, Father, to think about the things that you're teaching us through your last day's witness, the overseer, Yisrael Abel Hawkins. And we pray, Father, that you open up our hearts and our minds and inspire us to allow these laws and the practice of them, Father, to, to change, to change us. To change us in every way that you say that your laws can change us. And I pray, Father, that we accept this, this change within us. I do ask these things of you and thank you for them, Father, in unity with the body of priests of the house of Yahweh, as seed of the last day's witness, the great Khan Yisrael Abel Hawkins, and through our most ahab and honorable high priest and king, Yeshua Messiah. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. You can be seated. And shalom, Shabbat shalom, everyone. We're on page 85, chapter 11 of the 20th book of Israel. Now, I'm going to jump down to verse 3. Pastor says we need to keep in mind all this information during the feast and even after the feast. Keep in mind that Yahweh is finishing his plan and making man in his perfection at this time through his house. That's his kingdom. His kingdom here on earth that he is forming into his own likeness and image. Yeshua was the firstborn of many brothers. And I thought something that was kind of key here is the house, the kingdom, it's a family. I mean, I know, we all know that. It's, it's always been taught that way. But do we always think about it? You know, sometimes I hear brothers ask, well, when's the kingdom going to be here? <laughs> What's your definition of a kingdom? But pastor's been building this kingdom with the help of Yeshua all this time. And pastor goes on in verse 4. He's reading, you know, he says he has the KJV. And he sends us to, to John 5.27. Yachanan was his true name. Remember, the Roman Catholic Church under Constantine and a few others who ranked along with him down through the years actually had the names Yahweh and Yeshua replaced. And as, as we've been taught, it's not just the names that have been replaced. They took away Yahweh the Creator and Yeshua, the man who qualified to be high priest, out of the Holy Scriptures and replaced them with gods. That's a big difference. And it was pretty amazing listening to how Pastor handled correction this morning for those that are speaking against the work. And they know that's what they're doing. I found that very enlightening how pastor handled that. And we should learn from those things that he says and the manner and how he said them. He says, you'll find this in Unger's Bible Dictionary, which says that the name Yahweh should have never been replaced. Yahweh should have never been replaced in people's minds. They did it with a name, just as the media does today with many words that don't mean what they say they mean. The, should, the name Yahweh should have never been replaced, meaning it was replaced with words like Lord and God. And I'm asking us to think deeper than just the words. They not only changed the words, 
They threw Yahweh out and his plan and installed their own plan and their own God or gods. That is deceiving. And we have people worshiping gods instead of Yahweh. The gods are evil. Genesis 3, 5, evil like the gods. Read it over and over until you understand that. You know, Yeshua, our high priest, he was prophesied to come and to die. He was prophesied to be perfect. He kept Yahweh's laws without sinning. There were prophecies that described this man before he was born, thousands of years before he was born. He came, he fulfilled the prophecies and rightly accepted this position as high priest over the house of Yahweh before the house of Yahweh was established. The house of Yahweh was not prophesied to be established until the last days, and that's explained partially in Micaiah 1, 4, 1 through 3. But do you notice in verse 5, pastor's pointing out some very, very specific things about who Yeshua is. He's a man, son of man. Not half this, half that, not a chimera, not any of that stuff. A real man, just like you and I. And he said it quite a few times here, just in a lot of different ways. So Yeshua said in Matthew 24, 29, well, the whole chapter is dealing with the last days or the end, as Matthew 24, 3 says. The end is the last three and a half years that we're in right now, according to Daniel, the prophet of Yahweh. The end is prophesied to be destruction. The last three and a half years of the seven-year peace plan that was signed with Rabin in 1993. He prophesied of that, I prophesied of that myself from the prophet Daniel and the other prophecies in the scriptures. I wrote it in the book, The Mark of the Beast, and showed you that it's going to be confirmed with a man named Rabin. In 1993, Bill Clinton, Yasser Arafat, and Yitzhak Rabin signed that seven-year plan, peace plan. That was in 1993. Yet I wrote about it in 1976. It's in the book, The Mark of the Beast. Yahweh tells us in advance. Then he has his high priest over the house of Yahweh bring it about by inspiration through his house. There's so many parts, moving parts, pieces. There's so much to this plan that we're not privy to. So there's times we might get assigned to do something that seems contrary to anything or everything we might think ought to be done or done at that time or whatever, how it's done. But we have to always remember this. Then he has his high priest. There's prophecies about what we're going to do. But then he, he, Yahweh, has his high priest over the house of Yahweh, bring it about by inspiration through his house. Yeshua is the one making that plan. Who are we to second guess his choice or decision of how to do something, when to do something, where to do it, put it? We need to remember, we need to remember this system, this righteous form of government because it is forever. And if we want to be a part of that family, that kingdom, we have to accept these things. You've got to believe Yahweh. You've got to believe the one sent who was Yahshua through prophecy. Then you've got to believe the one whom Yahshua, the high priest, sent through prophecy. Yahshua cannot do anything, he said, on his own. He does what was written for him to do, what Yahweh wills. He upholds the will of Yahweh 
as the house of Yahweh does. In Yachanan 5.27, pastor goes on and explains again who Yeshua was. Because he is the son of man. Yeshua is the son of a man. If he wasn't a son of man and was a son of a God, he wouldn't fit this. He was the son of man. Because he is the son of man, he's been given. He's qualified for and has been given this authority to become the high priest over the house of Yahweh. And all judgment for mankind is given to him. It's given to him because he is the son of man who fulfilled the prophecies. That should be simple enough for you preachers to understand out there. He's hitting this point pretty tough, you know, pretty hard and very consistently. So there's something here that people don't catch. So spend a little bit of time thinking about what because he is the son of man means. You know, pastor says, I'm speaking today. This is quite an audience, over four million. That's right, over four. In fact, it's almost five. There are 4.8 million viewers. That's a lot of people hearing. This service is not like any other religions on the face of the earth. If you turn back to verse two, and I saved it for this point here on, on purpose. He says, let's see, where do I want to start here this morning? Yahweh bless each and every one of you who are hearing my voice out there. The scriptures say, blessed is he who reads. This is not just talking about reading. It's talking about explaining. That word read actually means explain, teach, and make others to understand, which was assigned. It's assigned in prophecy by Yahweh himself, written by his sacred prophets who lived according to the laws, so Yahweh was able to work with them and have them write things for us. It is written. It's a written contract for his house in the last days. That's what the book of Yahweh is. So when he says there's a lot of people hearing, it reminded me of the reading and the teaching and to help others gain understanding. And when we correct someone, when we teach someone, we need to remember and realize that's our responsibility to help them gain a knowledge, an understanding of what we've learned here in the house of Yahweh from Yeshua Hawkins. It's not to do anything else but help them to have a better, a deeper, a more profound understanding of the truth through teaching, not through force. This service is not like any other re religions on the face of the earth. According to the scriptures, it was prophesied many years before it started. It was prophesied when it would start. Yahweh didn't leave out anything. Then, he backs it up with the Amatria, which he put secretly in the Hebrew language that he gave to Abel and to Abraham. He now has made it possible in these last days, he had to, to his two witnesses. Because he is the son of man, not the son of a god. He's a son of man. Genesis 1.26 I will make man in my image, not the gods. He tried that. He gave them authority. They left their first estate. Now they're teaching people to follow lies, like Santa Claus coming down the chimney and setting up a Christmas tree and going all over the world in one night. Tomorrow they'll be chasing or trying to find eggs and laying, lying to the, to the children eggs that the Easter goddess laid. I guess the Easter goddess must be some kind of hen to lay eggs 
She lays colored eggs, and the preachers go around hunting them. This is the stupidity we see in the religions today. Not factual prophecies or the fact that you need to become righteous and stop your wars. Not that you need to keep the righteous laws of Yahweh. You know, Yeshua said in Matthew 6.33, Seek first the kingdom of Yahweh and his righteousness. And pastor's been spending some additional time on that scripture as well. Those worldly religions did away with all of this. All the preachers, 4,199 religions out there, and none of them practice righteousness. None of them really do anything the Bible says, but they claim to follow the Bible. They're all liars. That's what your Bible calls them. Write down and read 1 John, if you've got a King James. It's 1 Yachanan, if you have a book of Yahweh. 1 Yachanan 2.4. It says, he says, I know him. No, he who says I know him and keeps not his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. Then in the last book in your Bible... Revelation 22.12, blessed are those who keep his commandments. They have right to the tree of life. Where does that put all you preachers? And I'm sure there are some that are listening to these sermons that pastors brought in some of these workshop classes. You know, pastor went over a lot of this today. Maybe a few different scriptures acts 3 uh, 319 and this one's hebrews 10:21 it's it's the same lesson they did away with yahweh they did away with his laws they did away with with our high priest they've really torn apart done away with the priesthood totally and that's why we're learning what we're learning so that we can bring that back so that mankind can have abundant life and peace not drama every time you turn around you know pastor found an article he says threat from Iran it's verse 16 threat from Iran to US forces in Iraq remains significant and that's gone on that's part of that drama that I mentioned every time you turn the television on it's something else and something else and I understand why it's, it's today a lot about the coronavirus. I get that. It's one of the plagues. They don't know what to do. They don't have the foggiest idea. They don't even know what it is. They don't know how it's spread, where it started. And instead of looking for the answers, doing some problem solving and figuring out what truly the problem is, they're treating symptoms just like they always do. This is a disease that you're not going to treat the symptoms. You're not even going to treat the disease. There is no healing salve or balm for it. This is to wake people up in the world, not to terrorize us. It's to wake people up in the world to see there is a power. There is something behind all of your sin. This is what it causes. And Pastor reads on and on about the hatred that each of the nations are going through or that they're having with each other. You know, in verse 23, Revelation 6, 1 through 6, I won't read this whole thing because I've got to elaborate on it later. But look at verse 6. And I, ha and I heard a voice in the midst of the four living. That's the quartet. The quartet is mentioned. This was written in 96 AY. It was about 2,000 years ago that Revelation was written. And it talks about the house of Yahweh in Revelation. And these four are supposed to bring peace when they don't even have peace between themselves. 
How's that going to work? How's it been working for them since 1993? They don't have any of the answers. We've been given the answers. We're practicing the answers. That's what counts here in the house of Yahweh. Not what I want, and really not what you want, but what fulfills the prophecies. The plan is what matters. We're here to help bring forth that plan, to bring it to completion. The finishing touches, the part that we have inside us, that part, that's what we're here to fix so we can help others. It's a wonderful plan, and it's a wonderful thing to have a part in it. And at this time, if you'll all please stand, it's my great opportunity to introduce the next teacher, Greg Nathania Hawkins. Praise Zowie. You can be seated. Continuing here in the uh, in chapter 11 of the 20th book of Israel, just like what uh, the great great priest uh, was was mentioning, that you and I, you know, we don't have a plan for mankind. We don't have a plan for the universe. But Yahweh has a plan for mankind, and He has a plan for the universe. And unless you can find any other organization that can outline the, 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 the level of scrutiny that goes into the fulfillment of this plan, right? The level of detail that goes into this plan, unless you can find another organization to, that, can, that can do that, um, the same way that the house of Yahweh has identified from the scriptures, the sacred scriptures that Yahweh has brought forth to us, um, you would then have to say that truly Yahweh is true and every man a liar. Okay, because this plan that Father Yahweh has lined out is so deep and expansive um, and just like what the great Khan said, there's a lot of moving parts. You and I can spend 50 years just dealing, I mean, look at how many years pastors spent just dealing with the Sabbath and all of the parameters. He'll go off into another topic, but then he'll remind you, you know, I'm still talking about the Sabbath, right? It's really amazing what Father Yahweh has outlined for us. Even when, when the scriptures shows us about the, the quartet, right, the four beasts, and we know that the quartet was established 2002 um, in these last days, and Revelation shows that this same quartet will actually be around to bow down at the feet of Yahshua Messiah, right? In other words, in these last, this last time period, okay? These things are th things that we should be having on the tip of our tongue. We have to have these things so that when we're asked for the reason for our faith by individuals who we might come across, you'll be able to give them an effective answer, right? You'll be able to give them an effective answer as to what, what Yahweh's plan is and how he's outlined it. It's really an amazing plan. What we see here in... Um, uh, verse 28, where pastor shows that it says, hurt not the oil, right? This is the duty, this is the plan for the, the quartet, that they would make sure that individually, each four pieces of, that, the, of the quartet would make sure that they'll, their oil or their rights to oil is not hurt, and the wine that their lifestyle would be able to continue. We just saw today in the news that China is really working on ramping up their nuclear facilities, right? Having the ability, I believe it was like 119 um, 
uh, nuclear warheads that they're having in place to be able to fight off anyone who challenges their way of life or anyone who challenges their um, means by which to make money or utilizing oil. Pastor says here in verse 28, he says, um, the foreign companies, the foreign oil companies, the companies, um, the oil, uh, the oil, the oil, for the oil, don't hurt our lifestyle, but go to war, fight, take peace from the earth, kill, murder. From that, the earth starts crying out in sickness and disease and starts feeding it back to mankind in a rough sort of way. I'm afraid this plague, this plague we're going uh, through right now will be combined with the next one. And it definitely is. The, this time period of the plague, the first plague, is overlapping into the second one. Right? And it has to do with the second one. Just as Pastor is saying here, right, that it has it it will um join with the with the next one and the coronavirus is going to be there all the way up until the end and pastor broke it down um last sabbath when he showed that look we're barely we're barely into um we're not even halfway to having i, I believe he said it was only one third of one trillion I, I could my my numbers are are probably way off, but he showed that we're nowhere near to completing the amount of uh, the the amount of people who are going to be infected with the coronavirus. But you can see how this coronavirus will move very quickly. As a matter of fact, there's an article that, uh, and it, some of you might have seen it. But the article states, and this is from USA Today, it says a study published on the sixth day of the week in a peer-reviewed journal, uh, Science Advances, says that thousands of COVID-19 cases and hundreds of deaths in California, Oregon, and Washington State from the uh, fourth Roman month of the... Uh, to the 12th Roman month of 2020 might be linked to wildfire smoke. Okay, so what they're showing is the wildfire smokes have shown to be linked to COVID infections. Okay, not COVID symptoms, but the actual transmission of COVID-19. They found that the, fi the fire from the, the, uh, the smoke from the fire is responsible for a rise, an uptick in infection of COVID-19. Well, what does that say to us? It says a number of things. There was also another article that showed that white-tailed deer in various parts of America are coming down with COVID-19. Well, how are they getting it? They're getting it through eating, the shru e eating in, out in the fields. Okay, eating out in the in the forests, but that shows you that the COVID the COVID virus is coming up from the ground. Okay, and this is what Pastor has shown us, and he actually mentioned it in here that the Earth is actually testifying against mankind. Okay, COVID nineteen is actually coming from the ground, and when these wildfires are burning. They don't burn hot enough to destroy COVID-19. So what occurs, it goes into the air and gets spread throughout the regions. Okay? But all of this backs up what Pastor has been teaching us about the consequences of sin and how sin affects the land, as we see in Isaiah tw chapter 24. Okay? But continuing, Pastor says, the next one is going to be really rough until... The seven, or uh, until the seven are done with the destruction of almost uh, the total earth. Okay, so we see that the the nuclear 
Holocaust is going to be enough to burn up the coronavirus. That's what, that's what Pastor showed us, that with the seventh plague, which is the nuclear wars, that's going to be the end of the plagues, all seven plagues. Okay? And which is very, it's very, very true. And these are the things that we're looking forward to. Yes, in the house of Yahweh, we are going to be protected. We are going to be looking at our right hand and our left hand, which means that we're going to be able to see the reward of the wicked, but it will not come near to us. And this is the blessing that Father Yahweh is offering us if we will do what Yahweh tells us to do. Repent and submit ourselves to the instructions of the house of Yahweh as taught by the last day's anointed witness. Let's go to verse, uh, because in, in verse, at the end of verse 28, Pastor says that these prophecies are 100% reliable. Verse 29, we see here fighting over the oil. And these are some articles that Pastor went over uh, concerning the fighting over the oil. Verse 30, it says, Last week, Trump said Iran or its proxies plan, to sneak, plan a sneak attack on United States targets in Iraq. Right? And, and uh, Trump said that they'll pay a very heavy price if they do so. Verse 31, U.S.-Iranian relations have been bitter since the Islamic Revolution toppled the United States-backed um, Shah of Iran in 1978. So there's always been that contention there. Right? Verse 32. Pastor says there are two things that come to mind here. The older people are dying. There are a lot of younger people who are dying uh, two from this plague, and especially now with what they call the Delta variant, okay, which they're dealing with. They're having a very hard time in dealing with the Delta variant of the coronavirus, and there's signs of the what they refer to as the Lambda variant that is in the state of Texas and in the United States of America. But these these plagues. This first plague, which is going to be there for the duration of the rest of the plagues, is changing and is mutating. It, it's becoming a new God, as the scripture says. God's newly come up. Come up from where? Come up from the ground, from the earth, as Pastor has taught us. And now we see all of these things being backed up. You know, when Pastor brought out first, and he is the only one who has brought this out, that the first plague would take place alongside the first woe. I mean, when he first brought that out, I, and I've, I've mentioned it before, for me, I was like, wow, okay, I've never heard that before, that the first plague would be right alongside with the first woe. But then the news articles start coming out, backing it up. The first plague, right, which is the coronavirus, would be or have its contagion, according to what they're saying in the news, for the next five moons, which is ex exactly what's pointed out by the first woe. And so when Pastor tied the two of them together, you know, there was like, okay, he said it, so, I mean, we accept it. And after we accepted it, it came out in the news to verify what we had accepted. You know, it's really an amazing thing. So now when we realize that these plagues are coming up from the earth, right? And the news is showing that the, 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 the deer out in the wild, they're coming down with, with COVID-19. How are they doing it? They're eating the fruit of the field. They're eating the things that are coming up from the ground. Well, how is that occurring? Well, there's a number of things. It is coming up from the ground, but it's also falling down from the sky through the fires. The um, fires that have been occurring in, on the west coast of the United States of America are causing air pollution advisories on the east coast, in New York. Okay, so the entire, the entire um, United States is blanketed by this plague. 
Okay, and Yahweh's people are protected because of their obedience to Father Yahweh. Right? It begins here first, in the mind and in the heart. That's where Yahweh's protection is for his people. Okay, so but we see that the, the, the older and the younger people are dying. Um, continuing in verse 32, uh, the middle of 32, it says, that's the Roman Catholic Church, Yada, the heads of Yada. They're the Roman Catholic Church, the Coptic Catholics. The Coptic Catholics from Egypt, right? The Coptic Catholics from Egypt and the Roman Catholics from Rome. It's all on their head. Everything that's occurring right now because they rejected the way of Yahweh. It's all on their head. That's what Yahshua himself said clearly, back, clear back to Abel. Cain was the first God-worshipping religion. This is verse 33. I said God-worshipping. Yes, the world has turned to God-worship. God-worship, as one of Yahweh's prophets described, in their, uh, it described it, their God-worship or their gods are nothing um, nothing but like sticks of wood. They're dumb. They're stupid. They're hard-headed. And this is what occurs to their practitioners. Okay, Those who worship these gods make themselves in the image and the likeness of these gods. So they themselves become dumb. You remember what, past, what, uh, what Yahweh said in, in Psalms chapter 82 about his own sons. You are gods. You did not retain knowledge though, the knowledge of Yahweh. You should have defended the poor, the fatherless, and the widow. Okay, But in, your, in the conceits of your own mind, you've made yourself into fools. Right? This, this is what occurs uh, to those who the... the, the Nimrod system, the Sandusky system, the Coptic Catholics, all of these are individuals who give themselves over to the ways of the gods. Said so you could probably get that if you just wake up and see that Santa doesn't come down a chimney. These are the lies, the fairy tales, the stories that they've told in order to explain Yahweh's creation. Often paganism comes from the desire to try to explain what's occurring in the environment. And Yahweh said, don't worry about those things. I've got it covered for you. You remember when he said, look, when you, when you look up in the moon and the stars, you see the moon and the stars, don't fall down and worship them. You know, Yahweh was telling the people, look, I know how magnificent it is. I created it. How they don't lose time. They're able, they're, you, know, look, you look up in the sky, this formation is there. I, I made all of that. But don't fall down and worship it. I'm the creator. I created all of these things. Worship me. Because then you'll grow in wisdom. But these, the, the, the God-worshipping practices, they worship the creation rather than the creator. Okay, and that, that all of these things culminate in the massive confusion that occurs. Because once you're worshiping the creator, cre the creation and not the creator, then you no longer have to worry about eating clean food. Then you no longer have to worry about illicit acts that cause diseases to come forth. Right? Then you no longer have to worry about whether or not you... Because if I have the bigger gun, I can steal from whoever I darn well please. Right? But there's always someone who is going to be stronger than the strongest thief. Verse 34. Yahshua said, all this blood that is being shed, you are responsible for, Yada. Yada rules the Catholic Church. He's disqualified himself. And uh, it says, as I've been bringing out, in bits and pieces. Look, there's no one on the planet who realizes that the children of Israel, the sons of Yada, the sons of Levi, these are all individuals who have constituted the Catholic, the Catholic Church, the Coptic Catholics. They'll say to you, the Catholic Church says to you, that we have what they refer to as uh, apostolic secession, which means... That, that they come from the lineage of the apostles. 
Okay, that's what they that's what they hold as their 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 claim to the fame that they have in the entire world. Apostolic secession, well, what which that means that they're of the of that bloodline. Pastor went further to explain to us what that implies and use the scriptures to point it out. He's pointing out through the scriptures what nobody else has been able to realize. And only the house of Yahweh has been able to identify that these are the children of Yada. Okay? Yahshua even said it. Yeah, you are, you are the, uh, the offspring, but you're not the seed. The seed will do the works of Abraham. Okay? So, I mean, all of these things, the pastor just comes up and so, so simply and just, you know, just nonchalantly points out these things, cracks a few jokes about the way that the, 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 um, the system is and the, the Coptic Catholic teachings. And people take it lightly. But unless we investigate and really take his words, we won't understand how heavy the words are, how heavy and, and, and dense the teachings of the house of Yahweh is, and we'll take the house of Yahweh for granted. And some of us will leave because we didn't allow ourselves to be rooted in the teachings of the house of Yahweh. But that's, this is where the protection is. The knowledge of Yahweh as taught by the house of Yahweh will be your stability in the last days. That's what the scripture shows us. That's what the scripture shows us, and there's no denying it if you will put yourself into the scriptures. Let's go over to uh, verse 37. Because Pastor goes over again, the older people are being killed off because they're not reading their scriptures. And even further, they're not learning from the house of Yahweh, okay? But verse 37 says, the Pope is the mouth, the mouth of the beast. Turn over to Daniel. The Pope is the mouth of the beast. The beast is described there as some of the ladies brought out this morning, the priestesses in the house of Yahweh. Look over to uh, Daniel 7 and verse 7. You'll see the fourth beast on the earth. Daniel tells Nebuchadnezzar, that wherever man lives on the face of the earth, he's going to rule it. He's going to be over all of it. That's the fourth beast. Look over to verse 8, the last line. Um, eyes like the eyes of man and a mouth that speaks great things. Yes, all of these things came from Yada. It's because of man that we see the calamity on the earth today. Is because of the teachings of Yada that um, the Christians follow, the Catholics follow, the Jews follow, the Muslims follow. They all follow it. The Buddhists, they all follow after the teachings of Yada. But there's only one who's standing up for the true Heavenly Father in the earth. And that's prophesied in Isaiah 44, 42, 43, Zechariah chapter 6. We see these things and we should be thankful and glorify Father Yahweh that we are in the, pl the only place on the face of the earth that truly understands the name of Yahweh. If you'd all please stand, we'll go ahead and have closing prayer. Great and awesome Heavenly Father Yahweh, this is Kahan Nathania, Abel Yael Hawkins, asking permission to come before your wonderful throne of mercy. Under the headship of the great witness, our pastor and overseer, Yisrael Abel Hawkins, and through our most ahab, most honorable high priest, leader, guide, and judge, Yahshua Messiah. Father, we thank you and praise you, uh, and we're learning to thank you and praise you even more, Father Yahweh, continually uh, for the message that you have given us, for this opportunity that you have given us in these last days that is unrivaled, is literally unrivaled. There is none who has this plan. And there are no, there's no group of people who have been given this understanding that they would then in turn serve the entire universe. And we do pray, Father Yahweh, that you would help us to understand your ways, that we would be a servant to your creation through our obedience to the last day's anointed witness and to your work and to you yourself. We do thank you 
We glorify you in all things. It's in unity with the great body of priests, being seed of the last days and to witness. And through our most aha, most honorable leader, guide, and judge, Yahshua Messiah's name we pray. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh.